a tutti e benvenuti in questo nuovo video di Games Princess Io sono Fiona e oggi sono in compagnia di una persona molto importante Si chiama Frank O'Connor e lavora per 343 Industries Ma si pre presenterà da solo, mi sono anche incartata Hi How are you? I'm great, thank you Franchise Development Director is a pretty corporate and apparently a complicated job title Can you explain and describe me what exactly your job is about? So uh, I run a, a division at 343 Industries that's in charge of uh, how our fiction uh, is portrayed everywhere. So in games, in novels, in comic books, in uh, TV, uh, if we ever make a movie, that kind of thing. Uh, but also uh, we have the community and, uh, and uh, what we call our franchise team, uh, which runs this huge digital uh, navigable story bible where you can find out anything about Halo uh, from any game get the 3D assets, go look at screenshots, go look at video and stuff like that. So it's, it's a fun job, but it's a lot of moving parts. So you manage all of those stuff and try to coordinate all of them, right? Yeah, and obviously the, you know, the biggest piece of that job is working on the stories for the, the next games or next projects that we're working on. And uh, that's the fun and also challenging because the universe is now so big. From video games to everything else, what was the key fact that turned the Halo franchise from just a video game to something so vast to a universe? I think that, you know, the, a lot of people think about when Halo Combat Evolved came out, the first game in 2001, forget that there was actually a novel uh, released before that. So the first Halo thing that you could buy was a novel called The Fall of Reach, and it's the origin story of the Master Chief, uh, and it gave the universe this sense of depth that if you, if you hadn't read the book, you might not be exposed to it, but you could always kind of feel it in the background. And uh, our philosophy since that day has been to tell stories as if you're in a bigger conflict. So if you think about say World War II and you have the Pacific Theater of Operations, you have the war in Europe and so on and so on. Um, and so we try to tell a, a, a big story, uh, not just so that we can make the story bigger or expand it, but also so that it feels more real. Um, it is fiction, but we want it to feel like you're reading a sort of alternative future history. There is a field you have not explored yet with Halo. Oh, uh, well, there's a few things. I, I think my daughter wants me to make a karting game, you know, like Mario Kart with, uh, with warthogs. Um, but uh, yeah, they, we, get, we get lots of requests from our fans and uh, there, there's basically no form of fiction or entertainment that exists that we haven't been asked to do something, but we always have to make sure that there's a real demand for it and that it makes sense. And how important is the opinion of the community on the new products you are releasing on the Halo franchise, Halo? It's, it's, it's 100% of the importance of what we do. I mean, without, without customers, um, you obviously don't have a product. Uh, and, uh, and one of the, the trickiest things to balance is listening to your audience carefully. And we always do, whether we get it right or not, um, depends on the, how the audience feels about it, obviously, but we always listen. Uh, and we've always, uh, since Halo 1, uh, had a great two-way conversation with our audience. And we do listen to their ideas and their opinions. And the, uh, the, but you can't just say the audience, because there are people who love the game just for the story. There are people who just love multiplayer. There are people who just love the toys. You know, you don't know who you're talking to, so we have to talk to everyone. You are saying that there are some people who just buy toys without playing the game? Really? Yeah, we have, uh, we have fans that uh, are only invested in, say, the Mega Bloks, which is the kind of construction, uh, brick construction kit, um, and get curious about the games, um, but are kids, and so their parents are waiting for them to be old enough to play the games and so on. And we have people who don't have consoles or computers and they just read the books and so on. There are different little pockets of the universe and, uh, and they, they all are connected through the, the fiction and the franchise. That's pretty interesting. I didn't know this. Hmm. Let's talk now uh, about uh, Halo Wars 2. So, all the fans of the Halo series are used to first-person action. So, why they should play, and maybe love, this new chapter, uh, which is mainly a strategic game? You know, the, uh, uh, this is a little bit different. I think last time when we made the original Halo Wars with Ensemble, we were doing... Uh, it was a similar problem to the FPS, where it's going to be on a console, how do you translate mouse and keyboard uh, traditions to uh, a controller? Uh, and with Ensemble, we, we did a lot of um, really cool inventions at the time uh, to make it much more playable on a, a controller. With this sequel, though, um, we're working with a company called Creative Assembly, who is one of the best RTS manufacturers in the business, um, and they have a long history of PC games. So this one was a little bit different because we wanted it to be playable for console players with a controller, with an Xbox One controller, but we also wanted it to feel like a real PC game. 
Uh, and that was a different challenge than last time. When you were just making for a console, you can approach it with that singular focus, but this one was in, in some ways a bigger challenge. But uh, Creative Assembly uh, are masters at this, and they took uh, the cool stuff from the original Halo Wars uh, and the, the amazing work that they've done over the years on their own franchises and made this a game that feels like it's a console game for console players and feels like a real PC RTS for PC players. So, resuming, what are the differences between Halo Wars and Halo Wars 2? Um, you know, there's a, it's obviously a new story uh, with, with a couple of new characters uh, that you'll meet in the game, good, good guys and bad guys. Um, but ultimately, this is, a, I think, a, an evolution. We wanted to, I think we had solved some of the controller problems in the first game, but that gave us the ability to make things a little bit more complex, add some new modes like Blitz, which is a, a great way for uh, both experienced players and beginners to get something new of the RTS genre. Uh, and obviously, uh, making a game that does work on PC from day one um, in, involves a, a, a different level of challenge and, and finding a, a PC version of the game that's going to feel like a real authentic RTS to PC players is, is again, another another big part of that evolution. And I think we've uh, we walked that tightrope pretty carefully and I'm, I'm confident that people are going to enjoy that. Let's talk about the bad news for the Italian market. No, so we noticed that there is no Italian dubbing. Uh, what's... why? <laughs> Um, you know, in, in a world with infinite resources and infinite time, we'd love to have done it. I think when you, when, when you the FPS was obviously looked uh, in what we prepared fully for uh, Italy in the past. I think this uh, this was uh, literally it's a smaller game, and so you know business people make those decisions, um, and they 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 make rational sense to those guys. But the uh, it's it, it's not great if you're a fan, um, but. What I will say is that the, the way the game is presented and the way that it works uh, shouldn't be too intimidating. Do you have any suggestion for uh, those people who would like to play the game for the first time in their life? Yeah, they, we wrote the story for, for Halo Wars 2 with new players in mind. It's been, uh, it's been a long time since the original Halo Wars came out. and You can't expect people to just you know remember everything from that game and, or if they're new to the franchise to understand what's going on. So the game is built... Uh, with a storyline where the crew of the Spirit of Fire wakes up after years in cryosleep. They've been frozen. And so when they wake up, the universe is surprising to them. And they're learning as they go along. And that's the perspective that obviously new players get as well. Um, so they won't be intimidated by this. This uh, in some ways will feel like the first game in a series if you're new to it. But if you have played the original, um, there will be a lot of great callbacks and uh, sort of uh, reflections on the last game. What is the future of the Halo franchise. Uh, we are obviously our the next thing we're doing is this this week's launch of Halo Wars 2. Uh, we'll probably have a little bit more to talk about uh, with Halo Wars later in the year. We have some uh, updates coming that we're excited about. Uh, more to say about that later in the year. But um, we're obviously working on the next big thing back in the office, and uh, uh, the vast majority of our team is is working away uh, feverishly. Uh, on uh, maybe, I think, one of the most exciting uh, evolutions of Halo uh, ever. So, not much more we can say about that. Okay, so thank you very much, Frank, for being here with us, and just say ciao. Ciao. <laughs>